Let's talk about AI, because everyone loves talking about AI as soon as they wake up. Specifically, Apple intelligence. So it just came out for the iPhone 16 series and also all of the Apple Silicon Macs, so M1 forward. But in this video, we're not going to look at Apple intelligence itself. We're going to look at how they made it, because there's something going on in the back end of Apple intelligence that is very Apple. There's barely anyone else doing it, and I think it's really important for all AI in the future, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, to start doing this because as humans who create data, this is ensuring that it's staying private. So Apple's machine learning research website published this paper called Combining Machine Learning and Homomorphic Encryption in the Apple Ecosystem. And this is adding on to Apple's very private approach to AI, at least compared to some of the other AI companies. We've seen them emphasize this a lot in the past Apple events where they've talked about Apple intelligence, but now we're getting a firsthand look at how they're actually taking those privacy concerns into account. So blah, blah, blah. The actual important part of this is what homomorphic encryption is. So homomorphic encryption is basically a way to perform operations on something without decrypting it. So usually when you wanna send something to someone else's computer, like a server, you would encrypt it, send it over, and then in order to actually do something with your information, it would have to be decrypted. I don't know much about cryptography. It's a super complicated, field of study, but homomorphic encryption is basically a way to do this entire process without having to decrypt anything until the very end after you've already gotten a response back. The reason this is important is because while Apple said that a lot of the Apple intelligence processing is happening on the phone or the device that you're using, the more difficult queries are being processed on a server or just chat GPT. So that means firstly, you need to be connected to the internet and secondly, you're sending private data over the internet to AI. So without homomorphic encryption, once your data gets to the server, it has to be decrypted, processed, re-encrypted, and then sent back to you. With homomorphic encryption, the server doesn't need to do any of that decrypting. Your data basically stays private. So Apple is already doing this in a lot of their like very small features. So for example, if you have content restrictions set up on a kid's iPhone or iPad, a server can check if they're visiting an adult website without having to reveal the link that's actually being visited. So just a good cybersecurity practice overall. But it's also much different for AI because when we talk about AI, we also have to talk about how it's being trained. Security means nothing without ethics. Because either way, if we're using copyrighted work or work by independent artists to train these AI models, the bigger issue is not whether or not it's secure, it's whether or not it's morally correct to be creating a model that is based off of someone else's work if they didn't want that to be happening. Wow, this is such a positive way to say the company can use my usage data to train its AI without my consent. That is very true. I feel like since this is Apple, they have a bigger privacy commitment than a lot of other companies, which I guess is also kind of debatable. But if it were started by any other company, this is just a really roundabout way of taking all of your data and just milking it dry. This guy kind of explains the very complicated subject of homomorphic computing pretty well. It's a lot of very complicated math, but it's as if you learned about something subconsciously. You don't know why you know what you know, but you are still able to benefit. But either way, homomorphic encryption is basically just ensuring that none of your data is being exposed even when it's being processed on outside of your own computers. So this isn't exactly a new thing. This company Zama has been working on it before in the past for blockchain stuff. I don't know what exactly they're doing though because I have not heard of this company at all before looking into homomorphic computing. But homomorphic encryption itself is a good thing. What companies are gonna try to push with it is entirely up to the future to decide. Like, are they gonna try justifying training AI on copyrighted and private data? Because it's technically still encrypted. There's a lot of ethical gray areas with this that are still just not being covered at all. I still think it's really important that AI that does have the capability to search the internet implements this sometime in the future. By the way, new Apple devices just came out. Um, this morning, actually, the M4 Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pros just came out. We've got the same old design. They all start at the same price as last year, but we actually get a RAM bump up from 18 gigabytes to 24 gigabytes. And then for the 14 inch M4 
non-pro MacBook Pro, we get 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight. So I'm suspecting this has something to do with running Apple intelligence because it seems like it's pretty heavy on the RAM. But I think this was by far the most irritating upgrade to do. Like it was just not reasonable to pay $200 to upgrade the RAM. So that's good to see. We also have the new really, really small Mac mini. Um, and there's a bit of controversy around this. Oh, look at the keyboards they're showing here. Okay. So there's a bit of controversy around this Mac in that the power button has now been moved to the bottom. People are like, oh, this is the magic mouse all over again. But I think it's also been like slightly raised. So it's easier to push the button. Before it was, I think on the back of the Mac, right? Yeah, the power button has historically been on the back. So I just have a feeling this might be a little bit more convenient, but I'll just have to test out a unit to see. Someone made a comparison chart between the older Mac mini, the Mac Studio, and the Apple TV, and it's actually kind of crazy. Like it's closer in size to the Apple TV than the old Mac mini, although it is like a little bit taller. I'd love to know what you guys think about this like monolithic design though. I personally don't mind it. We've also got new iMacs. I've always been kind of iffy on the design of this Mac, mainly just because they won't add a black one. Like why? I feel like that would sell really well. You can't convince me that this looks in place here, but this gets the same M4 upgrade. I think some new colors and also a pretty generous bump up of the base RAM. Oh, and the iPads that just released had this option for a like nano texture coating, which basically just reduces glare and it's pretty similar to a paper-like screen protector if you've ever had one. And we just got something similar for the iMac screen. I think something similar was also on the Mac Studio display. Yeah, it had this option for nano texture glass and we have that same option here. But that's pretty much it for today. Let me know what you think about homomorphic computing. I keep saying homomorphic computing. Homomorphic encryption down in the comments. Do you think it's a big deal? What does it mean for companies training their AI on our data? Also, what do you think about these new updates. I know the thing that excites me the most is the bumped up RAM for the same entry price. Like I'm starting to get tempted to upgrade from my M1 Pro. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.